The entirety of the Kharkiv Oblast has been liberated. The Ukrainians have reached the Russian border to the north of Kharkiv and are now controlling the border points. This is a video of it. The battle over Kharkiv Oblast is a decisive and strategic victory for the Ukrainians. It's not come out cold, my friends. Look at this map. Kupiansk and Izium are liberated, we can see it from this map, as well as Liman. Russian units reported to have abandoned positions at Savatovia. Russian units on the P-66 highway are likely to be interdicted and crushed by Ukrainian infantry. Let's go to the military map so things are more clear. Yesterday the map stopped updating here, now we can go on and we can see bit by bit Ukrainians liberating the entire Kharkiv Oblast and Russians pulling out from the north. It stops updating, but we know that all of this area is now under Ukrainian control. Well, the last map was hinting at is that Russian forces supposedly are pulling out from Svatovia. This here. It would be a wise move because this distance is 35 kilometers, meaning that everything on this highway, traveling on this highway, is affected by Ukrainian artillery fire, which is incredibly precise. And Russians know this. This is all speculation, but we might expect Russian forces to pull back from all of this greater area here and take some time to set up a proper defensive line in the depths. As of now, we don't have yet reports that Ukrainians have penetrated into this area, but we have some reports that Russians are pulling away from it. Overall, this map seems to be quite adequate to show the situation on the battlefield right now in the north. Biggest takeaway is that Ukraine controls the border with Russia now. Problem here is that Russia continues to bomb Kharkiv from Russia, from the other side of the border. Ukraine has not made any major raids on the other side of the border, not that we know of. From Russia to Kharkiv is 40 kilometers and some places it's 35 to 30 kilometers. They can bomb Kharkiv with artillery, they don't even need rockets to do it. If they continue doing it, Ukraine might have to go into Russia to end this. This changes things, internationally it does. Here is a list of Russian losses on the 10th of September. Only the 10th, not the 9th, not the 11th. Those are separate days, separate lists. This list alone is very long. A lot of equipment knocked out cold, but a lot of equipment captured. Which means Russia has become the biggest contributor to the Ukrainian armed forces. Oh, the irony of this war. Russia has lost on the Kharkiv front and in their anger they have started to terrorize the civilian population of Kharkiv by attacking the city's electrical and water infrastructure with missiles. Out of which about 50-60% to 60 Ukraine is able to shoot down. Here is a video of Ukrainian air defense active last night, but the rest that came through did a lot of damage. Kharkiv population is about 1.4 million. Kharkiv is now effectively without electricity and, and with a city population that big, being without electricity for longer periods of time is a huge thing. But this is Belgorod, only 30 kilometers from the border and 60 kilometers from Kharkiv. Belgorod is a big city and it also lost power after these attacks. Although Russia supposedly disconnected Kharkiv and Belgorod electrical grids before the invasion, this is karma working super fast. My friends, I will now read you Patreons, the people who support this channel when the videos get to monetize or when I don't have a sponsor. Justa Plane Kui, Patrick Leonard, Steve Jats, Leroy Jenkins, Ben Huite. Thank you to these five people for supporting the channel. If you like the channel, the Patreon link is in the description below. Look at these lights. Quite beautiful, isn't it? What are they? White phosphorus, that's what they are. Russia dropped this on Ukrainian positions yesterday. You cannot extinguish this with water and it burns quite a long time with a very high temperature, igniting everything that can be ignited in the area. It is the last ditch effort from Russia to terrorize the Ukrainian positions around Kharkiv. For me, it connects to Nazi Germany. They terror bombed London with their V1 and V2 missiles, although the war was already lost to them. One of Russia's biggest weapons against the EU is oil and gas. This was the entire gamble Putin made that the EU couldn't be without Russia's oil and gas and so they wouldn't support Ukraine because this would mean losing Russian gas and oil. Germany has now seen the true face of Russia and is saying goodbye to Russian oil and gas for good. German gas companies are signing new LNG deals for 15 to 20 years with countries like USA. 
connecting to this gas manipulation. This is what Zelensky had to say to Russians directly yesterday. I will read it to you. Do you still think we are one people? Do you still think you can scare us, break us, force us to make concessions? Don't you really get it? Don't you understand who we are? What we stand for? What we are all about? Read my lips. Without gas or without you? Without you. Without light or without you? Without you. Without water or without you? Without you. Without food or without you? Without you. Cold, hunger, darkness and thirst are not as frightening and deadly for us as your friendship and brotherhood. But history will put everything in its place and we will be with gas, with light, water and food and without you. This is what Zelensky said to Russians yesterday. The near total withdrawal of Russian forces from Kharkiv Oblast and the Ukrainian forces advancing to the border makes a weird situation. Some Russian military bases and ammunition warehouses in Russia are now well within striking distance of Ukrainian forces. For example, this large ammunition depot is only 30 kilometers from the border and this Russian support base seen here is only 10 kilometers from the border. HIMARS could make quick work of them, but it would be striking Russian soil. We have all heard about harm missiles and what harm they can do to Russian radar systems. HIMARS and harm missiles are one of the crucial weapons that made the turning point of this war. Harm missiles have now been fitted to Su-27s also. That means most of Ukrainian fighter jets now can shoot harm missiles. On his telegram channel, Kremlin chief propagandist Solovyev called for execution of Russian commanders who allowed the counter-offensive of Kharkiv to happen. Russian military bloggers, Russian commanders and Russian propagandists, all of these people have something in common right now. In the last five days, they're looking actively for someone to blame. Because nobody can, not even the best propaganda in the world, can turn this defeat in Kharkiv around. So they're looking somebody to blame, they're pointing fingers. Some of them point fingers to Putin, others don't. What I would suggest is each and every one of these people to just go and look in the mirror. There's your answer. Thank you for staying with me. I will bring you news from Ukraine as often as I can. If you like the channel, then knock him out cold and Patreon both are in the description below. Until my next video, Slava Ukraine.